Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites, apologize! No. Anyway, welcome to Season 4 of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Oh man. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and once again we're here for part three of three with my interview with Ben Pronsky, the voice of Venom, among other things. Ben, thank you so much for coming back to the show one more time. Hey, Seek, my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. This is awesome. I, people have been asking me for a while, like, you got to get more interviews on your channel, and I love that. I got to interview you th three days in a row now. It's amazing. I, it means a lot to me. Thank you. Uh, no, it means a lot to me, too. It's a, a pretty cool experience, uh, and you obviously have a, a huge fan base of, uh, of people who are very passionate about Venom, so uh, happy to do it. Happy to do it. Sweet. Yeah, and then speaking of that, in the first episode, we kind of just had a fun conversation back and forth about Venom, the character in general, and then in the last episode, we kind of talked about your you know, your career and how you got into it and, and where you come from, and, and, uh, and in this one, this was going to be more fun because this is going to be to the root of, I think, what a lot of viewers want to hear which are the episodes that, that have aired so far, because obviously you know, we're not going to do spoilers, we're not going to talk about things that haven't happened yet, but uh, we are going to talk about stuff that already happened, so we're going to dive deep into your portrayal of Eddie Brock and Venom in this episode. So I'm so excited, man. Cool. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, so first question. Um, in Season 2 of Marvel's Spider-Man, we are introduced to Eddie Brock, a photographer at the Daily Bugle, who in J. Jonah Jameson's eyes is not as talented at a, as a photographer as Peter Parker, according to J. Joan Jameson. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd, I'd say that's his opinion. Yeah, that's yes, definitely. that's definitely his opinion. Um, and J. plus, J. J. is strongly opinionated. And Peter Parker cheats. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. but do you think that lack of faith in Eddie Brock from Jonah is a is a foundation maybe for his anger or frustration in in the series or in season two? Uh, because obviously Peter Parker and Spider Man add to that frustration and anger that that's they're kind of responsible in a way for it. But I just wanted to hear you you know as someone who plays the character and probably thinks about motivation and all these things about the character. Do you think maybe Jonah's lack of faith in and Eddie adds to his frustration? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it certainly adds to uh, you, you know the. Eddie's overall frustration in life, but I don't, I don't know about like as far as a foundational element. You know, you think about, um, you know, I, I went back and I looked at the, some of the comics when I booked the role um, of Eddie Brock, and you know, there's there's obviously a lot of different interpretations of what his past is, and um, you know, but I, you know, I can, for me for this series, you know, as an actor, you have to think about like, well, just because. For, in episode number whatever of of season two doesn't mean that Eddie hasn't been around for a while. You know, he grew up as a kid uh, at some point. And as an actor, you have to take into consideration, like, his life before the first time you see him in the series. Mm. Um, so, um, you know, I think that Jay Jonah uh, and Jay Jonah's attitude towards Eddie and, you know, what a crappy photographer he is definitely adds to, I think, what already exists, which is, like, a, an inherent feeling of, uh, not being good enough of him uh, uh, kind of being a loser. And so I, I kind of related it to uh, what happens in, in the comics with, uh, with Eddie's dad. Uh, you know, if you look back at some of those storylines, you know, he had a pretty complicated relationship with his father. Um, so I kind of, I, I kind of based it there. I gave myself that backstory. Um, and uh, you, you know, that kind of helps to get to that point where you first meet him in the series where he's already pretty, pretty upset with life you know what i mean right so uh but yeah jay jonah definitely contributes to his feelings of inadequacy which just pisses him off you know it just makes him angrier so sure and uh and yeah that's a great point and that's actually what the kind of the answer i was hoping for because you know i know you're an actor and you do dive in and hearing you go yeah i looked at the comics and we talk about on the show all the time eddie's upbringing and how many times it's changed in the continuity but we love like me and a lot of the followers on here we love that relationship with him and his dad because you're right technically that is the foundation of feeling inadequate and it's so it's so amazing to hear you say that and, and hear you put you know uh, do that research and, and use that in your portrayal that's awesome yeah, 
Carl, right? It yeah. was Carl Brock, Carl. I think was his dad. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it was it was easy for me. I mean, full disclosure, I you know, I had a pretty complicated relationship with my dad, so uh growing up, so it wasn't really hard for me personally to tap into that, those feelings of frustration and anger, you know. Uh so uh, you know, I I related to him in that way, you know. And then when the symbiote takes over and he finds like this additional power um it, it you know it's so gratifying for him uh you know because he finally feels this sense of uh of like ownership and and uh that you know he can do things that he never thought was possible before so right true and there and also acceptance i would imagine he feels as well uh, oh yeah. yeah 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 definitely the acceptance yeah, yeah. he's like yeah. hey something wants me that's i love that <laughs> you know um, yeah yeah that's great. And um, so in so that was, you know, in his first appearance when it was like a dead man's party was the when was he came in and then the second episode after that was called Venom Returns. So in Venom Returns, you know, Eddie's kind of sets out to ruin Spider-Man's life by exposing his secret de- identity to the people that Peter loves and is close to. So even though those story beats are kind of nods to older comics as well, this is a new universe. So I'm kind of curious in your opinion, um is Eddie Brock inherently a bad guy in your opinion or does he just temporarily is he blinded by his hatred and he's just kind of waiting for that opportunity to prove that there is a hero inside of him um you know i mean i i don't think that he's inherently a bad guy i just think that he's he's flawed man you know he's just a flawed individual because of these you know these bad hands that he's been dealt in life over the years um you know i don't necessarily think that uh photography was the best career choice for this guy. He obviously is, you know, not, not making a very good living because he's, he's not, he doesn't have a lot of talent in that particular arena. But, um, but no, I mean, you know, I, I think it certainly contributes to his arc that by the time that we see what happens in Venom Returns, uh, you know, and this, and this full blown animosity, you know, and the, the cultivation of both Eddie and, the Venom symbiote's uh, uh, anger and frustration, and you know he's he sort of is uh, the perfect host next to uh, Spider-Man Peter Parker, you know, because of you know uh, the symbiote can feel that that anger and that frustration, uh, you know, and because the symbiote has evolved and already has some of the powers of Spider-Man, um, it feeds off of Eddie's anger, you know, so. Uh, uh, I don't think that he's inherently a bad guy. I think that he's just, uh, you know, incredibly flawed. Yeah, that's yeah, that's. I would 100 percent agree with that. And I, um, and yeah, and as far as the symbiote goes, I mean, technically the symbiote was also rejected by Peter, so I'm sure it likes having Eddie, someone who's so willing to accept it as well. And there's a, a great codependency there. But um, yeah, I love this episode per- personally, and I'm a big Miles Morales fan. So when I was watching this and seeing Peter and, and Miles, or you know, Miles and Peter having a team up to fight against Eddie, it was it was awesome, man. And I thought I thought you did a great job in this episode. Oh, thank you, man. I, that was actually one of my favorites, uh, as, just from a, a, a performance standpoint. You know, when he when he captures Gwen Stacy and Anya and Jay Jonah and has them all, you know, tied up and everything. And uh, there, there's a really like wonderfully creepy moment in the script where he's like, "Why? Because my sp- your spider sense doesn't work with me." You know that that you know, sort of creepy, inherent, you know, uh, vengeful sort of moment was, uh, I don't know, for an actor, that's like, no, 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 I mean, you just like, <laughs> <laughs> I love that stuff. So, uh, yeah, that was a really, really fun episode to play, for sure. That's awesome. Well, the so we don't, unfortunately, we don't see the symbiote for a few episodes after that, because sadly, the ending of that one is Eddie uh, and the symbiote being defeated and going, you know, Eddie falling into a coma, essentially. So, in season two's episode Superior, the symbiote does escape when it leaves behind a comatose Eddie Brock at a government facility, and the symbiote's goal in that episode is to rebond with Peter Parker. Um, and then also, you know, we'll talk about Maximum Venom here in a second, but it has a different goal, uh, you know, with the seed in the Maximum Venom episode. So the question is, is how is portraying the hostless symbiote when it has such terrifying goals, and did you approach it any differently without Eddie being attached? Um, no, I mean, not necessarily, you know, we, we had, I had conversations with, uh, like Kevin and doc, um, you know, the writers, uh, producers about, 
you know, well, you know, how different do we want to play if, if the symbiote is just a symbiote without the host? And, you know, we had, we had discussed that earlier on, even when uh, he was attached to Eddie Brock. Uh, and I think that we, we, uh, we discussed in the last episode um, that, like, for example, Ben Diskin's portrayal in, um, in Spectacular was a little bit different because he was, uh, Eddie was inside the symbiote um, the whole time. There's a little bit more of a human quality. And Ben Diskin rocked it as yeah. Venom. And I remember when I first got the role, man, he was one of the first people I called. And I was like, are, are you cool with this, man? Like, they, I've been offered this and I want to make sure, you know, and you know, uh, hopefully it's not going to, they're not going to go to like Ben Affleck for the next iteration of, they're just going to go with all Ben Venoms. But uh, he, he, he was very gracious about it. You know, he was already, he, he was already been cast as Flash Thompson in this particular series. But, um, you know, in that version of it, it was much more, there was a much more human quality. And in the earlier episodes, you know, we had discussed with the, with Kevin and Doc, you know, there's a, there's the potential that the symbiote is going to leave Eddie. And if that happens, how is it going to be vocally different? And that's why they wanted to make sure that we were sticking with a little bit more of that creature sound, uh, because I think they knew that the storyline was going to go there, that the symbiote was going to leave uh, Eddie's body. So, um, yeah, it, 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 as far as the way in which you played, no, it's, it, there's still the same intention, uh, with, you know, the vengeance uh, against Peter Parker, Spider-Man, uh, you know, the, the inherent n- need for the symbiote to, uh, uh, to evolve and to grow and to just become better. You know what I mean? And that is, that is one of its primary intentions is to become the superior species, um, you know, and, uh, you, you know, it, it grows and grows from there. So it's, it's pretty, it, no, it's pretty similar as far as how it's portrayed, you know, it's, uh, those inherent needs are, are, are still there. Uh, but vocally it was just, it was pretty similar to what I did even when I was attached to Eddie. Gotcha. Yeah. And that, and I imagine things like that do take a lot of conversations like worth, like you said, with uh, Kevin and doc and uh, other people probably too. And that's awesome that you reached out to, you know, uh, Ben also who was like, Hey, you played Venom before and you said he plays flash in this series. Yeah, Diskin plays uh, plays Flash Thompson. Oh, awesome! In Marvel Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I don't think I connected that dot before, and uh, and that's I, I feel ashamed because I normally do my homework. Uh, but that's uh, that's great. And uh, as we know in the comic books, we never got to talk about this before, uh, but we, we were going to mention it was Flash Thompson does become a form of Venom in the comics, and I know uh, you had uh, shown interest in that character in the comic book version as well, uh, Agent Venom. Oh, Agent Venom is so cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, how cool would that be for, for Ben uh, in this series? Who knows where this series is going to go? I, sure. I have no idea, but how rad would that be if he gets to <laughs> come back into the role of Venom by playing uh, Agent Venom? That'd be so cool for him. Yeah, whether this series uh, or a future series or whatever, like, yeah, that would be awesome because uh, I, I love you both. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great to hear both of you guys have that friendship and that camaraderie, and uh, that's cool. And it's cool to get his blessing. I, actually, that's a cool, that's a classy thing on both your parts. Well, I mean, yeah, you, you, you always want to do that, you know, and I think that uh, the voice acting community by and large really is, it, 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 I have never experienced a community that's so sort of like giving and gracious and understanding. Uh, you know, if you play a character for like 30 years or something like that, yeah. uh, then you, and somebody else gets cast in the role, you know, I mean, like you, you, you've heard other uh, versions of Optimus Prime other than Peter Cullen, right. uh, you know, and, and you can hear the difference. Uh, you can definitely, you, you, you understand it. But I think that by and large, man, the, the voice acting community is, they're really, really uh, cool, giving and gracious people. You know, uh, I feel very lucky. You know, I used to do a lot of on, on camera stuff and the on camera community is a lot you know, the, uh, of actors is a little bit different, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, it's, it's a dog eat dog kind of world with that, you know, you're, you're, you're trying so hard and it's so highly competitive. Right. Um, but there's something about the voice acting community, uh, that is just, uh, just very different. So I love it. That's, I love it. that's good to hear. And that actually is a great segue to our, our next quick question, which is, um, typically when actors do record for shows like this, uh, there are, some moments where people are in the room together and then there's a lot of moments when you're kind of alone and you're not with the other actors. Was that kind of your experience with this show in particular? 
Yeah, I mean, just about every episode was uh, what they call an ensemble record or a group record. Oh. Um, so you did have other people in the room, um, which to me is the most fun. You know, uh, all of those scenes with, uh, you know, with Miles and Peter. So, you know, with uh, with Najee and, and Robbie. Um, yeah, you're right there with them. Um, you know, it's a very specific way of recording. You've got to be careful not to step on each other's lines because they need to get every all the audio very clean. But it also means that you're actually in a space recording with somebody else, so it feels much more like theater, like it's much more of a theater performance. Uh, you know, once once they finish the initial recording with the group or ensemble record, then you'll go back later and do ADR for the episode, which is additional dialogue replacement um, or additional dialogue recording, which is where you go in and they may have changed the line or they want a, they want a different, you know, flavor or musicality in the delivery or... You know, they've actually done rewrites, and so they've changed something up, and you go in, and that's usually just by yourself when you do ADR. Um, but, yeah, for the most part, uh, it was, yeah, it, it was with other people, with the other actors. I remember one time we did a huge group of I can't remember which episode it was, but it was like Fred Tattashore, Laura Bailey, uh, Melanie, uh, Robbie, Najee, uh, uh, Scott Menville, it was just this huge group of like wickedly talented voice actors, um, and I think it was the, I think it was actually Venom Returns because it was such a huge cast, right? Uh, and that, uh, and it, that was intimidating. I'm not gonna lie, because <laughs> because when you're in the presence of such like you know wonderfully talented actors, and this is my first Marvel show, man. I'd never, you know, this was the biggest role that I I booked. Right. Um, so, you know, I felt very lucky to be there, but I was also at first very intimidated. But then once you get into the record and the sort of creative process, it's just like uh, it's the coolest experience ever. It really is fun. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I can tell, I mean, like, uh, because the difference between, you know, when obviously you're an actor. So if you were, if you had, did have to be by yourself, you would still bring that performance. But I, I can understand that being in the room with everyone and feeling their energy or, or actually hearing their level of intensity. So you know where to take your level of it. It's like, I'm sure that's really great. It's great to hear you had such a great time. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a blast. I mean, yeah, if you're by yourself, you still have to bring it. I mean, you still right. have to be, you know, you, you still have to make sure that you're giving your you, you, yourself the circumstances, the stakes of the scene, you know, all of that uh, that you learn in acting classes. You know, the, the things that are like sort of the root or foundation of just, you know, acting beats, um, you know, and understanding like the arc of the character and where it's headed and where the scene's beginning, middle and end is, uh, you know, all of those things you take into consideration. So, but yeah, be, being in a group court is, uh, man, that is, it's a blast. It's a blast. Awesome. And uh, I do have one more question here. I wanted to uh, kind of wrap this up because now that we talked about your appearances in season two episodes, there's only been one episode where it's kind of a two-part episode, but one episode of Maximum Venom so far, which was Web of Venom, part one and two. And I don't want to get into spoilers, obviously, for future episodes. So just for this this episode, um, and that's including myself, I don't like to be spoiled. So uh, so in in this first episode... I'm about to... I'm I'm about to get like a Marvel dart in the neck over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Marvel, stand down, stand down. Deadpool, stand down. Stand down. No, yeah. No, we're cool. No spoilers. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, yeah, the, all, all I'm asking is just for the first episode of uh, Maximum Venom, which, by the way, I loved. I talked about it on the show already, and a lot of people uh, in the comments were really supportive of it and seemed really on board. So from your perspective, now that you know that we all loved it, was there a favorite moment in that first episode that you recorded that maybe you loved or that really stood out for you on a performance level? Oh man. Um, well, there's so many, like there's so many juicy moments and like big reveals in that, in that episode that are key to what happens in season three. Okay. Uh, but I don't know, man, that's a tough one. I guess, uh, well, I love, 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 they showed me the artwork before we actually did the record, which is rare that they do that. They usually don't like have stories for us for the actual recording session, but they showed me the artwork of the multiple symbiotes, ah. uh, that when, when Venom, uh, the, the, that seed, he pulls up the seed and it, you know, shoots the beam up into, uh, up into space. And then at the very end, there's that reveal of like multiple symbiotes. Right. And I, I actually, I got to do all of those multiple symbiotes, <laughs> oh. and we did it sort of like as a, as a layer, 
So one of them was like, and then another one was, you know, and another one was, and they actually layered it in the, uh, in the mixing of it. But when I got to see that art, and they told me like what was going on because they don't tell they don't tell us you know where everything is headed necessarily. Sure, sure. Uh, so that was that was probably the, uh, one of the coolest moments of that particular episode. I, I definitely when I saw the art and I knew that I got to voice multiple uh, symbiotes for that for that shot in particular. I was like, okay, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> I will from a fan's point of view when I was watching the episode and we got to the ending there and they showed those other symbiotes. I physically stood up out of my seat <laughs> and I was, I was at home by myself and I just stood up and was like, yes, planet of the symbiotes. Like I was so excited. Uh, so, uh, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a pretty cool reveal. It's a pretty cool reveal. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm really excited to see, you know, uh, how things turn out with season three. And I, I think it's a, I think it's a very cool concept and they've been very passionate about, uh, you know, uh, this season in particular, I think that they know that they have something special. So pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. And I, and after meeting you guys at D23 and, and talking to Kevin and Doc and then even staying in touch with them all these times, because, I mean, which is the nicest thing that for them, they set this up and helped me get in touch with you. And they are just the nicest guys. And, and when they saw how passionate I was and just how excited I was, I knew from the announcement of this series because I hadn't been watching the first two seasons, but when I heard Maximum Venom was going to be season three, I myself was like, all right, I got to go catch up because they're doing a Venom-focused cartoon. I'm so excited. And and uh, even, if, even if I wasn't doing this show, I would I was still been that excited. And so I, 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 I felt that specialness, and I think a lot of people are too. And they're seeing the toys out there, and they're seeing the, you know, the show coming out once a month, and it's been awesome. So having you here and answering these questions and being here the last three episodes – it, it means a lot, and I know a lot of people out there who listen to this show, they're going to really love and appreciate these as well. So I, I can't thank you enough again, Ben, for coming. Uh, man, yeah, my pleasure, man. Thank you very much for having me. It, it means a lot to know that uh, you know people love this character so much, and I just feel, I feel very fortunate that uh, I've, I've had this opportunity. I mean, the fact that it's uh, – the, the fact that I still get to go into work you know, from time to time and, and, and play this character is still uh, very surreal for me. So, yeah, I'm very grateful. Very grateful. That's awesome. And uh, real quick before I plug the show, uh, where can people find you on social media? Oh, yeah. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Ben Pronsky. Awesome. And they'll know how to spell it because in my video, I have that written above your... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's not, it's, I'm not an SKI. I'm an SKY. So it's B-E-N-P-R-O-N-S-K-Y. There you go. And, uh, and then yeah. also, if you want to hear more of Ben, obviously stay tuned for the rest of Maximum Venom, which is going to be airing, I believe, once a month. Uh, I don't know if they have a set schedule yet, but the second episode does air tomorrow night, May 17th, Sunday, on Disney XD at 9 p.m., or if you get the Disney Now app on your phone, which is free to download, you can watch it there as well. So again, Ben, thank you so much, and everyone out there, go check out Maximum Venom, and, uh, and I hope you enjoy. Thanks, Zeke. I appreciate it.